Good morning. Good morning. You know, I was just sitting there getting ready to settle in my seat, and Vonjoy reminded me I was supposed to start the service. And I'm sitting here thinking to myself, man, I almost forgot. But how many of you are glad that God never forgets? That he's always on time. He's always, always on time. So we're going to worship him this morning. We're going to celebrate him this morning. This is Pentecost Sunday. 
This is the Sunday that the, the power that we have, the power that dwells within us, the power that guides us, God said, we're going to pour it out today. And I tell you what, I don't believe that he was done pouring it out. A few, you know, some people say, oh, no, 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 that was just for biblical time. No, 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 no. We're in biblical times, amen? Amen? So let's stand to our feet. Let's worship God. Let's call on the Spirit of God to unite us, to empower us, to move over us. Amen? Can we call on the Spirit of God to move within us? Amen? Amen. So let's worship God together today. Can we give God a shout of praise and an amen as we're going into worship? And the song just sings, as the Spirit was moving, can we sing, as the Spirit? As the Spirit was moving over the water, Spirit come move over us. We're asking God to just rest His come Spirit on us. On can you rest your Spirit on us, Lord? Come rest as the Spirit was moving. As the Spirit was moving over the water, Spirit come move over us. Oh, can you rest? We're going to sing the chorus and it just says, come down. Come down. Spirit, when you move, you make my heart bow. When you feel the room, you're here and I know you are moving. I'm here and I know you will feel me. Come down. Spirit, when you move, you make my heart bow. When you feel the room, you're here and I know you are moving. I'm here and I know you will feel me. Spirit was moving over the water. Spirit, come move over us. For you to rest. Rest on us. Rest on us. We're asking for the fire and wind. Fire and wind, come and do it again. Open up the gates, let heaven all in. Come rest on us. Come rest on us. Part of the song, and it just sings, Holy Spirit. Can we cry out and lift our hands and worship? Sing, Holy Spirit, come rest on us. You're all we want. You're all we want. Can we join in and worship? Holy Spirit, come rest on us. You're all we want. Can we stay right there? We're going to declare and decree that it's Holy Spirit. For a chant for God to bring yourself in the place. When you feel the room, you're here and I know you are moving. I'm here and I know you are feeling me. Come. 
Come down. Come down, Holy Spirit. Lord, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you this morning. God bless you today. You may be seated real quick in the house of the Lord. A couple of things we want to share with you uh, real quick, and then we'll get back into a, a spirit of worship. Just want to remind you, and, and, and even before services, I was going around and, 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 and greeting and, and, and saying hi to some of you. I realize that some of you are, that this is your first time here, or maybe uh, this is your first time back in a while. And, and so uh, what we'd like to do is, especially for, for you, we'd like to invite you following this service. If you see that, that monitor in the back, uh, we'd like to invite you following our service. Just go back and meet us back there. Uh, this is our Belong Sunday. And this is a Sunday that we take the time uh, just to simply tell you uh, what the next step is. Uh, just tell you about the church. Uh, sometimes folks are a little hesitant to get involved. This is the environment that we want to answer any questions that you may have, uh, answer how you could get involved, uh, introduce and, and meet some of our staff members. And so we would invite you following this service to join us uh, back at the Belong table. Also, want to remind you that Vacation Bible School signups are still going on. Yes, 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 yes. Now, let me tell you, the thing about Vacation Bible School that I discovered last year is this. We think Vacation Bible School, we think, oh, that's just kids. But can I tell you that Vacation Bible School is just as much fun for adults, all right? I mean, the adults that we had serving, I mean, they were going harder and playing the games, more enthusiastic than the kids were. <laughs> so, but uh, this, uh, this year, our theme is food truck party. So that already tells you it's going to be a winner right there, right? Uh, but uh, we've got some great surprises, some great fun that will happen. So again, if you, again, maybe you know, you say, you know what, my kids are gone. I, I don't, okay, that's fine. But you know what, maybe you've got some neighbors, Maybe you've got some grandkids. Maybe you've got some cousins or whatever that, that need to know about the love of Jesus. Amen? This would be a great, fun way to introduce them into the kingdom. Also, today, this is a big day for us, y'all, that following our 11 o'clock service, that at 1.30, we're going to go and check out the North Campus we're going to have a peek into the promised land today. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, we are excited about it. We're going to go. We're going to pray over the land. We're going to pray for not only uh, our church, but we're going to pray for those surrounding churches, those that are proclaiming the name of Jesus. We're going to be praying about the folks that God is going to be sending, that, that we, I believe that already the soil is being tilled over there. That, that, that God is already raising up some folks. And so, and, and then we're going to just come together inside the building. And you know what we're going to do? We are going to, on this Pentecost Sunday, we're going to pray that the power of the Holy Spirit would fall on that place and remain. Amen? Amen. So join us today, again, at 1.30 over at our North Campus at 3690 North Rancho. Amen? Amen. And also, typically, I just want to remind you that typically on the first weekend of the month, we typically celebrate communion on the first Sunday of the month. But because of everything that we've got going on, we're going to actually push that back next week. So we will celebrate communion together next week here in service. Amen? Amen. Um, just want to remind you right now, uh, as, as, I, as, as I think about the goodness of God, as I think about... Uh, just, just how he blesses. I was on the way into work this, uh, on, the, on the way into work last week, and and, and 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 a thought occurred to me. A thought occurred to me about God and His blessing. And and what I discovered, and what God was sharing with me, is that when God blesses us, sometimes we we expect, or sometimes we want a windfall blessing. Do you understand what I'm saying? We we, we just want it to all hit us at one time. But I've discovered the thing that we often overlook are the consistent blessings, are the consistent favor, are the consistent provision, are the consistent times that he's gyra, that he's providing consistently for us. And I thought, man, if nothing else, I, that just proves to me his faithfulness on a whole different level, on a whole different manner. And I just thought, man, God, I, I'm, 
I'm so glad for just the consistent presence, the consistent blessing in our lives. But as he is consistent with us, we should be consistent with him. Amen? We should be consistent with him. Bible simply reminds us that when we receive an increase, that we should do what? We should be consistent. We should bless him. We should bless him. So I'm simply going to ask you this morning that you be reminded of the consistency of God and you, in turn, would be consistent with him. There's three ways that we can honor him this morning. We can do so while we've got the red uh, uh, boxes in the back that you can write out a, 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 a gift or an offering and place it inside those boxes. You can go online to our church center app, and uh, that's what I do. It's easy, about two minutes, and uh, not even two minutes, about 20 seconds, and it's done. And then uh, also you can go online to championlv.com, and you can contribute there. And uh, we're going to just ask you uh, right now, it looks like our, our ushers are, huh? No? Okay. Well, I'll tell you what, let's, uh, but following our services, uh, please go ahead and uh, deposit any gifts that you may have uh, in the uh, red offering buckets on the way out. Also, prior to us going back into our time of worship, you know that this, uh, I, I, I've got to take my hat off because this year, um, this was kind of the first year that our kids had been back into school on a full-time basis. You know, we, we ha- kind of had the, the, the COVID offset and everything, and, 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 and it's been challenging. It's been challenging, challenge, challenging to our teachers. It's been challenging to our students. But to really persevere and to overcome so many things uh, in the classroom this year, uh, wow, what an accomplishment. Whether, again, you went from first grade or to, to second or whether you went from high school to college, that it took some, some, some strength and consistency to make it through. Amen? Amen. So what I want you to do right now is I want you to just to turn your attention. And this isn't everybody. Uh, in our congregation, but there's certainly uh, just some of those that sent their pictures in, but we just want to take a moment to honor those who graduated this year. Amen? And we, 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 again, they, they went maybe from first grade to second grade, but we're going to celebrate them. Amen? Right, Amen? Amen. So go if you would, go ahead and turn your attention right now to the screens for our graduates this year. Now, I don't want to embarrass anybody, because we had some more, but, you know, they were too cool to sit there then. Ryan. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. We, we had some others, but uh, anyway, we, again, we want to celebrate and uh, just honor those, uh, again, by getting through such a, a difficult year this year. Uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, ask that our prayer team would go ahead and move into place right now. And what we like to do at this point in time is uh, just want to pray. We want to pray over those graduates. Uh, we want to pray over those, uh, those that are moving into a new season. And uh, again, I, I just think there's something 
uh, <laughs> I was told the other day that there's a, a, blessed, a blessing in the transition. Amen? There's a blessing in the transition. This represents a huge time of transition. So, Lord, right now, we want to come together. We want to pray a blessing over those students, over those graduates. We want to pray a blessing over all of those who are, who are uh, striving academically, but those who are striving spiritually as well. That, that, that there are those that, that may not be in a class, but they are graduating to the next level. Lord, your word says that we move from glory to glory. And we just believe, we just believe that you're bringing us into a place, into a season, into a time that your glory will shine even more. So Lord, as we pray right now, as we intercede right now, as we plead to you right now, Lord, we're asking that you would hear the prayers of your children. We know you will. You're faithful, you're just, you're wonderful, you're loving. God, move. Move over us, move in us, move through us. Heal, restore, restore, restore. We just pray, Lord. I, I, I just sense that, I, I just sense in my spirit that, 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 that we are to pray for a covering. That we are to pray for a covering. That we are to pray just a covering. I, I don't know what all that means, but I, I, so Lord, we just pray for that covering right now. We just re release that covering of the Holy Spirit on our house, on our hearts right now. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Will you join me? Will you stand on your feet right now? Jesus, 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 Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. We're getting ready to move into our time of prayer. But if there's something, if there's a need that you have in your family, in your body, in your relationships, I just, I, I, I just, again, I, I, I've got so much confidence, so much faith in his faithfulness, in his ability not to disappoint, and the fact that he is a miracle worker. He is the miracle He is the restorer of the breach. Mm. Jesus. So Jesus, speak to us, minister to us. Minister through us. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Can you begin to thank him right now? Is there, can you just begin to praise him and thank him right now? Thank him for his involvement, for his care, for his concern. Thank you, Lord. Jesus. We love you, Lord. So we move into worship. If there's any prayer need that you have, again, something, maybe it's something in your body, maybe it's on behalf of someone else. But come forward. One of our prayer members, touch and agree. Meet them. Meet them. Where two or three are gathered, amen? Amen. Let's worship. Spirit of the living God, Spirit of the living God, we only want to hear your voice. We're hanging on it. Spirit of the living God, Spirit of the living God, we want to know you more and more. We're hanging on every word. Come speak to us. Speak. 
Spirit of the living God, Spirit of the living God, we only want to hear your voice, hanging on every word, Spirit of the living God, Spirit of Changes what we see and what we see when you come in the room when you do what only you can do. It changes us, it changes what we see and what we see. and fill the atmosphere your glory God is what our hearts long for to be overcome by 
your presence. Can we sing that together? Holy Spirit, you are well. Come flood this place. Come flood this place and fill the air. Your glory, God. God is one. There's nothing we want more that will ever come close. No thing can compare. You're our living home. Sing your presence. Your presence, Lord. This Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. This place, come flood this place and feel the anger. Your glory, God, your glory, God is what our hearts long for to be overcome by your presence, Lord. Your presence, Lord, your presence. The sweetest of loves Where my heart becomes free And my shame is undone All because your presence Your presence, Lord Said I've tasted and I've seen it Hallelujah I've tasted and seen the sweetest of love Love. Well, our heart becomes free. Well, our heart becomes free. And my shame is under. My shame is under. Yeah, yeah. Your presence, Lord. Your presence, Lord. Lift it up, open your hearts, let's sing. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Of what you're doing in this place. We want to be aware of where you want us to go. Make us more aware of your presence. Let us become, let us become more aware of your presence. Let us experience the glory of your good. Come on, sing it together. Ready? Let us become more aware of your presence experience let us experience the glory let us become aware let us become more aware of your presence experience let us experience the glory of your good let us become more 
what you're doing, God. Are aware of your presence. Let us experience the glory of your goodness. Lord, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, you are welcome. Yes, we lift up our hearts. Come flood this place. Come flood this place and fill the atmosphere. We want your glory. Your glory, God, is what our hearts we long, long for. To be overcome by your presence, Lord. Holy Spirit, you are welcome. Come on, sing, come flood this place. Come flood this place. Fill the atmosphere. Your glory. Your glory, God, is what we long for it. To be your presence. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Yes, Lord. Just sing, your presence, Lord. Your presence, Lord. We need a fresh and filling. Your presence. Your presence, Lord. something this morning. Do you sense him this morning? Do you hear him this morning? He's speaking to us this morning. Speaking to us. I just, in my spirit, I believe there's a word in the house today. Can we just pray right now that, that, that the, the Bible talks about in 1 Corinthians chapter 7, it, it, it talks about that, 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 that God will provide a message in times like this. And I just believe I believe that in the quiet, that there's a message. Can we just seek the Lord for that right now? Can we just pray? And if that's you, if you're the one, will, will, you, just, will you just let me know if, if, if you're the one?
The Lord would say, examine your hearts this morning, for I am a God who renews and restores. The Lord would say, if your heart is hard, that I am breathing on you this morning, that your heart may become soft again. The Lord says, receive my breath, receive the breath of my Holy Spirit, for I would not have you stay in this place of your heart being hard, but I would soften your heart so that you can hear. I would soften your heart, says the Lord, so that you can hear what I would speak to you even today. Receive my word. And receive the breath of my Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 sits upon the waves, fear not, fear not. The word restoration, the word Um, to know how God weaves and, 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 and I, I know Cal, you and I have been talking and, and the word that God gave you is, is all about restoration, about renewal. Uh, I'm just so excited today because I just know that God is going to do something amazing. He wants to restore. He wants to renew. He wants to revive today. Amen. So listen, today is a special day and we are honored, honored, honored to have, number one, we, we, we are a part of an amazing, amazing district in, in the Assemblies of God of the uh, Northern California, Nevada district. And, 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 and Pastor Cal Swenson, he is over the leadership development. He's over the, the, the church planning initiatives. And so um, as, as we are, I'm just honored that, again, even the way that God coordinated schedules, uh, that he would be here with us on this Pentecost Sunday. Uh, it's such an important day. But I will tell you this, when you hear what God has placed in his heart, you're going to see that there was a word indeed in the house today. So, Pastor Cal, if you would go ahead, will you guys please welcome uh, Pastor Cal Swenson to the platform this morning. Amen. You may be seated. It is good to be here with you today, and uh, I just sense God's spirit here. You know, uh, as I was praying, I, I went down and saw my 93-year-old mom down in Phoenix the past couple days, and as I was driving back up, the great thing about no cell phone reception is that you still have God reception. And as God was speaking to me and confirming not only what I'm going to share with you this morning, but also the fact that he's concerned about each and every one of us, and it doesn't matter I believe we're at a place where, and what the Spirit is doing here today, it doesn't matter who the speaker is or what is spoken, but it's what the Holy Spirit is speaking into our hearts today. And uh, let's just open up our hearts. God, we thank you for what you've already done in this place today. And Father, now as we look into your word, we pray that your word 
would be real to each and every one of us. Father, I pray right now that any distractions that would, uh, that would uh, trend us away from what you want to speak into our hearts this morning, Father, we come against that in the name of Jesus, and we pray for a spirit to speak clearly today. And we'll thank you for that in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Pastor already shared that uh, I work for Northern California and Nevada District. Usually when we're on this side of the Sierra Nevadas, we say it's the Nevada and Northern California Assemblies of God. Uh, we, there we go. And we kind of switch it up a little. But the truth is there's 460-some churches in our district meeting together on Pentecost Sunday just like we are today. And the celebration we have as the largest Pentecostal organization in the whole world is that when we celebrate Pentecost, it is more than just pointing to a place on the calendar and saying, oh, this is where it's at 50 days after Easter. This is when we celebrate. But it is different because we understand and we embrace Pentecost. And we embrace what the Holy Spirit can do in each and every one of our lives. And it is important that as we there, thank you, it is important as we experience the Holy Spirit that we don't allow the Holy Spirit to be commonplace. I've grown up in Pentecost. I grew up in an Assembly of God pastor's home, been in the ministry for 40, 45 years at this point, and uh I've seen God do all kinds of amazing things, but it is so important that it is all the things that have happened, we don't forget what is right in front of us of what God wants to do at this moment in this service today. There's a portion of scripture, in fact, if you want to flip your Bibles open, if you have them, in Acts chapter 2 and verse 4. And some of you know this by heart, but I'm going to read it to you anyway. It says, uh, on the day of Pentecost, I'm reading from the New Living Translation. On the day of Pentecost, all the believers were meeting together in one place. And suddenly, there was a sound from heaven like the roaring of a mighty windstorm. And it filled the house where they were sitting. And then what looked like flames or tongues of fire appeared and settled on each of them. And everyone present... What is, how many present, how many experienced it? Everyone present was filled with the Holy Spirit and began speaking in other languages as the Holy Spirit gave them this ability. This group of people had been waiting for God to move by his Spirit for 50 days. They understood that Jesus said there was a promise that was going to happen, and it was going to appear to them, and they were all in one place, and they were all in one spirit. The thing is, is that it's the power of the Holy Spirit in their lives. The truth is, is that uh, much on the I believe God wants to do something powerful but but I believe that one of the things that we forget about is that the Holy Spirit is involved in every and every part of relationship with God. The first thing that the Holy Spirit does is generation. It is us getting to a place that as we God, that that still small voice of the Holy Spirit is tugging at our shirt collar and saying, you need Jesus. You need Jesus. Most of us that are here in this room today have experienced that. We've experienced that pull of the Holy Spirit in our lives. We can point back in time to a time when we finally succumbed to the Holy Spirit's leading and we opened up our heart and we accepted Jesus as our own personal Savior. If I just share just a second, I uh, uh, I flipped a bunch of houses. I mean, how many know what flipping houses is? We find a house that's all messed up, and we reach in, and we go, and we fix it up. Uh, my wife and I, 
Uh, we've been married. We just celebrated 40-year anniversary this past weekend. And you won't clap for this. We've moved 31 times. There we something. But, uh, <laughs> but, uh, but during that time, we flipped a lot of houses. And the current place where we're at right now, we live just outside of Sacramento in Auburn, California. And we live in the Tall Pines. I'm an Arizona desert rat. I moved to Arizona. I was three years old. Planted at my first church in Lake Havasu City down the river from you guys. Uh, you know, I know what the heat is. Perfect temperature in my mind for decades was 105 in June. This is the most beautiful time of the year. In fact, I walked into a rental car place uh, in, uh, here in Las Vegas a couple years ago in the middle of the winter time, and there's a couple girls there, and they got their parkas on and their beanies on and their gloves on. It's 52 degrees. And I said, my bet is you guys are natives. And the girl goes, how can you tell? You know, it's like, okay. But, but anyway, the, the whole thing about uh, turning houses, we bought this property about three and a half years ago. And when we tried to buy the property, all the mortgage companies were telling us, if you move there, there's a guest house on the property. And you're going to have to tear it down because nobody's lived there for like 10 or 12 years. And it's just a requirement that we have. And I walked into this house, and I saw a lot of potential. I saw a lot of, I mean, it was all made out of redwood. It was built in 1949. It wasn't very big, but it had great bones. And we finally found a mortgage company that would allow us to purchase the property with the intent of regenerating that house and making it brand new again. You know, the thing is, is that as God looks at you today, you are valuable to God and God looks at you and says, I want to regenerate you in my presence and my spirit. And even when other people have given up on you. And even when you've given up on yourself. God never gives up on you. He loves you today. The scripture says with an unconditional love. With a love that doesn't prefer anybody else over you. You are special to God today, and God's purpose is to rebuild us. We look at what the Holy Spirit does. In fact, I'm, I'm way out of my slides, guys, if you got my slides going on. In, um, in Acts, or actually it's in Titus chapter 3 and verse 5, it says, God saved us not on the basis of deeds which we did in righteousness, but in accordance with his mercy by the washing and regeneration and renewing of his spirit. It's only by God's spirit that any of us can sit here in this room today and be in relationship with God. It's only by God's spirit today that any of us can experience the move of God and the cleansing of God and the chance from God for a brand new start. Every one of us has to come to that place before we go any further in relationship with God is realizing that we're special to God and that God has given us another chance, a second chance to grow in him. If you watched any of the HGTV shows, you know that some of the places they go in there is that they go in there with a sledgehammer. In fact, I was talking to Pastor Elvin this morning, talking about the demolition, demolition permit. That just sounds very destructive on one hand. But you know what? That's what God has to do in our hearts to break down the old life and to make us brand new again. The battle that most people experience when they step into relationship with God is trying to hang on to those things from the past and say, you know what, I'm going to step into relationship with God, but I'm going to hold on to my past. God's plan has always been that there would be a brand new work that he would do in our spirits. And the same way we went into that little guest house and we stripped it to the studs and we put a new electric in it, we put new plumbing in it, we put a new bathroom and a new kitchen and new sheetrock up, we painted it, we put carpet on the floor, we put vinyl uh, plank on the floor too to make it look good, we painted it inside and out. The same way we did that is the same thing that God has to do in each and every one of our lives. But we have to be open to the work of the Spirit. It's the Spirit that does that inside of our lives. It's not us. 
I don't know how many of you are old enough to remember black and white TV. Oh, I got friends in the room. And I remember watching cartoons on black and white TV, and the guy was trying to make a decision. And all of a sudden, a little devil would show up on one shoulder. You remember that? And the devil would go, go for it, man. Just go. Forget about everything. Just do that. And a little angel with a halo on him would come up on the other shoulder and says, don't you do that. Listen to me. I'm going to keep you out of trouble. You know what? In truth, that's what's happening in the spiritual realm in each and every one of us, each and every moment of every day. The Holy Spirit is there not to make us uncomfortable, not to mess up our lives, not to steal our fun, but the Holy Spirit is there because he sees around the corner. The Holy Spirit is there because God loves us. The Holy Spirit is there because he knows what's best for our lives, and it's important for us to release from the past and to look forward to what God has for us in the future. You know what? We can't go back and change anything from the past. In fact, the majority of people that are having a hard time going forward is because they're so anchored to the past that they can't go forward. They're tethered to the past. And you know what? That has never been God's plan and purpose for his people. Uh, Romans chapter 12 and verse 2 says, Don't copy the behavior and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think, and then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. And then it follows up in Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 23 and 24. It says, let the spirit renew your thoughts and attitudes. Put on your new nature created by God, truly righteous and truly holy. Here's what takes place. In the original language, when this was written, the thinking, the, the picture was taking a river and stopping it and making it go the other direction. Completely putting the brakes on. Throw up that picture. I used to live in St. Paul, Minnesota. This is the Mississippi River. Mississippi River, even by, it starts up in Bemidji, Minnesota, but by the time it gets down to St. Paul, it is so filthy. Everything imaginable is floating on that river. There's old tires. There's, there's wood that's floating down there. I won't even go any more descriptions. Let your imagination run wild of all the stuff that's going down there. And, and when I first ran across this whole concept of stopping and making everything go the other direction, I thought about the Mississippi River. Because if you would stop that, just the very momentum of all of that junk that's on top of the river, as it purges itself and goes the other direction, that's what God wants to do inside of each and every one of us. God wants there to be a purging that takes place. God wants there to be a cleaning that takes place. And if you'll notice these portions of Scripture, it isn't a once and done, but it is a constant process of God cleaning us up. And the reason for that is that we leak. We get full of God's spirit, and God puts those pieces together. And all of a sudden, you know, those three categories of sin, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life, especially here in Las Vegas, let's be serious. You, I come from all the different areas. I drive about 1,000 miles a week visiting pastors and churches. And as I fly in, as I drive into Vegas, there's parts of town, man, you just feel that darkness there. And it is so important that as followers of Christ, that we are continually transformed by God's spirit, that we are continually filled by God so that as we come in contact with people, as we come in contact with situations, as we things with our eyes and hear things with our ears, that there is a purity that rises up because of the power of the Spirit, that even as there is a purging that takes place on a river, there's a purging that takes place in our lives constantly so that we're living holy lives. Now, is that an easy place to be? On our own, we can't do it. On our own, there is no way that we can get clean enough and pure enough and strong enough to be able to face the things that the enemy throws at us each and every day. It's important that we have the presence of God there in our lives and that we are 
walking side by side with him. Actually, he is side by side with us. Uh, these mind pictures that go on. I saw a, a picture car uh, that had ran into the pole, and it had a, a little bumper sticker that says, God is my co-pilot. The problem is God wasn't the pilot. The problem is, is instead of letting God drive our lives and control our lives and fill our lives with his presence and his spirit, Because it's only God that can do this. You know what? If we were to time this morning, we'd come up with all kinds of things that we tried to fill our lives with. I've spent the past couple of days with my mom and her husband in Sun City, Arizona. And I have a picture on my uh, And it's stuck by the living room. Both of them are stuck on their phones. My mom's playing free sale. And my my stepdad is is uh, looking up quartet music, and uh, you know it's just it's just that is that is their pastime. But you know what? I found, and many of you in this room have found that when we spend time with God, God will prepare us for the next connection. God prepares us for those people. I've always tried to live in the place that, and I pray, make me a good steward. Of that as I come in contact with people, that place to be. But I'm already filled up with your spirit. That I'm already ready for that situation. That I'm already ready for that connection. Opportunity to share you with somebody else. But that practice on our part that is constantly renewed on a regular basis so we can be and do what God has called us to be and do. We need to stop the flow of our lives and allow the Holy Spirit to take it in the opposite direction so that we can be pleasing to God. The third thing that the Holy Spirit does, and it's what we celebrate today, is empowerment. I love empowerment. I love that whole arena. You know, as I think about this little house that we went and we fixed all up and everything, you know what? We stepped back and said, man, it looks good. Man, it looks totally different. We had neighbors driving down the street and would pull over and say, thank you so much for fixing up this little house. It's been an eyesore. Thank you for painting it. Thank you for cleaning up the yard. Thank you for redoing the whole thing. And you know what? It was one thing for us to sit back and say, yeah, it looks kind of good. But it's another thing for us to go and turn the water on. And to actually put into motion things that are happening. It's another thing to walk out over to the electric box and flip the power switch on and allow power to flow through that house, through all the outlets, through all the lights, through all the things that we put there. What many times we don't do as followers of Christ is flip on the lights. We allow God to do a work inside of our lives. We allow salvation to take place. We allow there to be a cleaning up that the Holy Spirit does. But we never experience the fullness of the power of God. We never experience the flipping on of the switch and putting into motion what God from ages past has always planned for each and every one of our lives. My Bible says that the steps of righteous people are ordered by God. And that means that that order, I believe, with all my heart, is that we need to allow the openness of the Holy Spirit to flip on that empowerment switch and us to receive the fullness of what God has always been about and not be satisfied with just a little twitch. Now, I know enough about electricity to get myself in trouble. I've got curly hair everywhere, every once in a while on my head from me grabbing a hold of a live wire or doing electric socket. I, I probably should turn the power off when I switch electric outlets out. But, uh, but, you know, doing those things and getting a shock, it's like this. But you know what? I know that if I walk over to the electric box, and I look at the 220 that's in there. That 220 is not only going to knock me down, but that 220 will put me out. That'll be the end of it. God wants to put us out. Put us out to the old life and turn us on to the new life. He wants us to get a hold of the 220 of the Holy Spirit and allow it to totally transform our lives. 
Go ahead and pull that scripture up. That's the next scripture on there. We look at empowerment. Okay, I'll read it. It says, Acts 1.8, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses, telling people about me everywhere, in Jerusalem, throughout Judea, in Samaria, to the ends of the earth. It's important for us to know that uh, that empowerment just isn't for us. It just isn't about us getting to a bless me club where I'm so blessed because I'm filled with God's power. But it's important for us to realize that an empowerment is so that the world would know Jesus. Years ago, there was a big revival in Pensacola. And we went there a couple times and came back to Lake Havasu City. And, man, God just moved powerfully in our services and man people being slain in the spirit and people speaking in tongues and people being healed and people being delivered it was just powerful what god was doing but we found that what was happening is that we had a bunch of people that started coming to the, from other churches and it became a bless me club all of a sudden they came just to be blessed but there was no change that was taking place outside the church the reason for god's power is so that the world would know jesus but we have to allow the Holy Spirit to turn the switch on inside of us. You know, we look at the Holy Spirit today because this is Pentecost. And the truth about speaking in tongues, first of all, is that speaking in tongues is biblical. Really, we look at all the things that people have come up with from other groups and other movements. And some people say, well, that's for the past or that's for, you know, if you need to go and, and speak to a certain people and you don't know their language, the Holy Spirit will come on you and you'll do that. And I mean, all kinds of different things that discount it from a personal relationship with a third person in the Trinity that is the Holy Spirit and realizing that the Holy Spirit is applicable for us today. There is nothing in the scriptures that draws a line and says, and for this time, for this people, for this group, for this decade, for this century, that was good for them, but we don't have to even deal with that anymore. In fact, actually, if, if there was ever a time in history, we need God's Holy Spirit and his power more now than any other time. In Acts, again, chapter 2, verse 4, it says, Everyone present was filled with the Holy Spirit and began speaking out of the languages as the Holy Spirit gave them this ability. Our position isn't just about speaking in tongues. Our positions is about our view and belief in Scripture. If we believe in Scripture, if we believe that the Bible is the Word of God, if we believe anything between these two covers is real, then we need to believe that it's all ours. We can't just pick and choose and say, we're going to take some of this stuff and we're going to discount other stuff. We need to believe that all the Bible is real and all the Bible is applicable to us today. Amen. Secondly, speaking in tongues is the initial physical evidence of the baptism in the Holy Spirit. The purpose of spirit baptism is more about speaking in tongues. It's about God's spirit. But instead, we believe that the speaking of tongues is the outward visible sign that the Spirit is at work in our individual lives. People can't see sometimes or tell on the outside by itself, but there is a physical evidence, an initial physical evidence of speaking in a language that we have never learned, that we don't understand ourselves. It is a spiritual, heavenly language between us and God. When I speak in my spiritual language, I like to believe that the devil can't understand what I'm saying. It's like, you know what? Take a break. Oh, the other man, and to be able to speak in tongues and be able to communicate with God from spirit to spirit. And it is so important that as we look at that and as we receive and as we operate in that, uh, that Acts chapter 19 and verse 6 says, when Paul laid his hands on them, 
the Holy Spirit came on them, and they spake in tongues. It is still at work in us today. We believe that if people have an open heart and an open spirit to the Holy Spirit, that God has promised that he would come and he would fill us beyond filling. In fact, actually, baptism, if you look at that word in the original language, means to dunk or to totally immerse. We are used to a sprinkling of the Spirit. We're used sometimes to just sensing just a little of the Spirit, but God wants to plunge us all the way under in His presence and Spirit. You know, it's kind of like I, I went to the hotel this morning, and, and my habit is to walk to the coffee pot. And I got that my, my uh, mug of coffee, and I got it all filled up, and it was full of hot coffee. But it wasn't immersed and baptized in coffee. If I would have taken that over to uh, a five-gallon bucket and filled that five-gallon bucket with coffee and dropped my coffee cup in there, then it would be all encompassed or baptized in that coffee. And it works the same with us. To be able to realize God's filling, thank God for the filling. Thank God for the sensibility of us being able to go, oh, wow, we feel and we, we sense God's spirit. But that a whole total immersion of God means that he totally plunges us and dunks us in the presence of his Holy Spirit. There, that, you know what? There is, a, there is a, a natural automatic response when that happens scripturally. And that automatic response is that we begin to speak in a language that we've never heard before. That is a spiritual language. It plunges us into a relationship with God and a dimension that we've never experienced before if we will allow the Holy Spirit to do that in our lives. And third and lastly this morning, speaking in tongues is the outward sign of the Spirit's work inside of us. It's the sign of that complete immersion. Acts chapter 2 and verse 11, people there were saying, we all hear these people speaking in our own language about the wonderful things God has done. And they stood there amazed and perplexed and said, what can this mean? You know, Jesus promised his disciples and his followers that they would be filled with God's power. Luke 24, 49 says, Jesus speaking, I will send the Holy Spirit just as my father promised, but stay here in the city until the Holy Spirit comes and fills you with power from heaven. Part of the problem that we uh, operate in, and let's call it what it is, as Americans and even here in Las Vegas, is we want everything instant. We are ready to wait. We are ready for God to fix us and prepare us for the fullness of his spirit. I'll be honest with you, that little house that, uh, that we fixed up, if we would have gone in there, and cranked up the power right away, we would have burned the place down. Man, there were loose wires, there were broken things there. If we would have turned on the water full blast, it would have blown the faucets right off the wall because it was rusted pipes and all the things that were there. We need to understand the process of what God wants to accomplish in our lives. First of all, we need to allow God to save us and to come in and change us from the inside out. We need to allow the Holy Spirit to sanctify us and transform us into the image of God's Son. And we need to allow there to be an empowerment then from the Holy Spirit now that we got all of our ducks lined up, that boom, we experience that total dunking and immersing in the Holy Spirit where it becomes not only a part of what's taken inside, it becomes part of everything that we do on the outside. I'll tell you the truth, when you get baptized in the Holy Spirit and you are totally immersed in God, when you walk out of this place and you walk into a restaurant, you walk into Walmart or 7-Eleven, you walk into your place of work, people are going to know that something is different. They're going to know. I, I call it, it's kind of district, I call it the high pro glow. There we go. Because what happens is that people sense that there is something different and something has changed inside of us. You know what? There's an old saying that says that people have to guess if you're in relationship with God. You probably aren't. It's important for us to leak Holy Spirit on the people that we come in contact with. So we look at today, 
on the day of Pentecost. We look at uh, realizing uh, what God wants to do in our lives. Our source hasn't changed this morning. We still need the power of the Holy Spirit in our lives. We need the Holy Spirit's power for growth. We need the Holy Spirit's power for consistency. We need the Holy Spirit's power for witness. Zechariah 4, 6 says, It is not by force nor by strength, but it's by my spirit, says the Lord of Heaven's army. What about you today? Some of you are here, and you're sitting there going, Man, I am so far behind in this. I just need a relationship with God. You know what? That relationship with God is available for you this morning. Some of you are here this morning, and you say, man, I've, I stepped in a relationship with God years ago, but, man, you know what? There's so much clutter that is in my house that God needs to take care of, that I need God to come in and do that transformation. I need that river to stop and go the opposite direction. And then there's others of you here that are like, man, I just want all of what God has for me. Let me share with you that God doesn't have any boundaries. I grew up in churches where you were saved, baptized, and filled with the Holy Ghost. You had to say filled with the Holy Ghost like that. That was the transition, and it all happened the same day. And you know what? God can do it all for you this morning if you'll just open up. But let's start off with first things first. I'm going to pray a prayer right now. If you need a relationship with Christ, or maybe there's stuff in your life that shouldn't be there, pray this prayer along with me silently as I pray it audibly, okay? God, I thank you that you love me. I thank you that you sent Jesus to die for me. Father, today I listen to that sweet, still voice of your Holy Spirit that's speaking to me right now that I need Jesus, that I need to get cleaned up. And, Father, I ask you to forgive me on my sin, my failure, my mistakes. Make me brand new right now in Jesus' name. Take the old. Father, put it in the sea of forgetfulness and make me brand new. And I thank you for that in Jesus' name. Keep your head bowed, eyes closed just for a moment. If that's you, if you prayed that prayer with me first time or maybe a thousandth time, but you needed to get cleaned up, just by a simple thing, just slip your hand up and say, Pastor Cal, pray for me this week. Thank you, 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 thank you. Praise God. How many over here? Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank God. God, I thank you for each of these that have raised their hands, but more importantly, it is what you, their, their act of obedience of what they're doing this morning. Father, I pray that you'll bless them because of that, that uh, action of saying that I need Jesus and I need to get cleaned up and be faithful to your word, God. Clean them from the inside out, even as we pray. Father, do that renewing that only you can do in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Now, what Pentecost Sunday is all about, I believe that the Holy Spirit is here to empower us. I believe that the Holy Spirit is here to completely immerse and dunk us in the presence of God. And if you're here this morning and you've never been baptized in the Holy Spirit and never had that, that baptism experience, I'd like for you, even as we all stand this morning, just to move out and to come down to my right, your left. Just go ahead and move out this morning. Everybody stand. And uh, let's... We're going to have prayer teams if you'll move out, and we're just going to believe that God is going to do that work. If you're here this morning, and maybe it's been a while since you used your prayer language, we're going to believe this morning that the Holy Spirit is going to reinstill that, that God is going to clean house, that God is going to completely fill you and empower you again. And even as uh, we have the worship team, even as, as we're here this morning, Pastor, you want to take the rest of it away. So much. Let's give Pastor Cal a hand for that amazing on time word. When I said God had a word, that word was regeneration. That's the word regeneration. And we're talking, and again, I love that example of the of the cabin of 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 of, of what happens when you try to place that. <laughs> turn that power on, and, 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 and there hasn't been uh, a regeneration. Uh, you can blow that thing out. <laughs> you can mess that thing up 
if the Spirit doesn't do its work first. So what we're going to do is, is we're going to dismiss our service here in just a little bit. And, and again, for those of you that are new, uh, you know what, maybe come up here, get filled with the Holy Spirit, then go back to the back and, and learn more about the church. That's okay too. But we're going to close and then following our dismissal, if the Lord has put it upon your heart and you just want to receive the full power, uh, the, 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 again, the fullness of being able to, again, turn the power on, turn the water on, uh, be able to do that, uh, we're going to ask that you would come up and, 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 and pray with one of us and just for the, to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. But, again, thank you so much, Pastor Cal, for an amazing on-time, perfect word for the day. Thank you so much. God bless you. And again, we remind you to join us today at 1.30 uh, over at the North Campus, uh, 3690 North Rancho, and we will be having our peek into the promised land, get a first look on uh, Pentecostal Sunday of, of what God has for us. Amen. Lord, we thank you again for the word today. We thank you, Lord, that you are indeed regenerating us, that you see value in us. Lord, you put the work into us on the cross. Lord, Jesus did the renewing work in the cross. Now, Lord, help us to live in the fullness of the blood of Jesus. Help us to live in the fullness of the power of the Spirit. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for the work that you're doing, that you've done and you'll continue to do through us. Lord, we just pray a blessing on our people as we leave this place today. Bless with the, just with the presence of the Spirit, Lord with peace, power, protection, and provision, again, with the blessing of the Lord that gives and does not take away. Lord, again, we honor you. Help us, empower us to glorify you in everything that we say and do. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. We belong. We are strong. We are the church together. God bless you guys. Have a great day. Again, go back to your belong table. Come up and be filled with the power of the Holy Spirit.